are network engineers who are looking to get into automation forced into using Python? Maybe not. Let's talk about it. All right, at the end of the day, automating a network device is all about using various protocols, data models, and data structures, combining it all together to make some sort of automation or network programmability happen. And programmability isn't always just about setting configs. Sometimes it's all about just monitoring, collecting data first before we react to it, which is a really, really important thing to do. Now, a lot of these devices allow us to communicate with them using a REST API. All of these things that we're talking about, if you're not, if you're new to network automation and you're not sure about what REST API is all about, data models, data structures, protocols that we communicate to these devices on, if, if this is all shaky for you, do not worry because the Cisco DevNet Associate Exam, that's what it's here to train and that's what CBT Nuggets is building out right now. But in a previous video, I asked the question, should a network engineer learn Python? And that really is an ambiguous question. The question was, should they learn Python or should they learn a different language? And or if you are looking at it as should a network engineer learn Python, meaning should they actually learn network automation, there's a different answer to that. But I did make the argument that you don't necessarily have to use Python. There are just a couple main reasons why you would. But to illustrate the fact that you don't actually need to learn Python, I'm going to hit one of Cisco's sandbox devices, an iOS XE device using PowerShell right now. Let's go. All right, I've got VS Code fired up here, and you can see I've already built out a little bit of a PowerShell script that's just going to hook into a Cisco iOS XE device that is in the DevNet sandbox, and it's just going to query for some data. It's basically going to get all of the info associated with not only that device, but you can look right at the end of the URL, specifically what's going on with interface gigabit Ethernet 1. That's going to be configuration data as well as statistics or status data, too. Now, that is set in the URI variable. We also have to pass in basic authentication credits. Now, this really stumps people because the invoke rest method commandlet has changed. In the latest version of PowerShell, the preview of PowerShell version 7, we can actually just specify the authentication parameter and specify that it's going to use basic and then pass in the credentials after using a get credential commandlet. That is different because used to, you have to actually encode this into base64 and then pass that in as part of the header. Now, the headers themselves, we do have to specify the accept because these devices are expecting not just JSON, but the Yang data model version of JSON. Also, with the accept header, there's also going to be the content typed header, but that is specified in the parameter itself too. So we're going to use invoke rest method that is doing just what it says. It's going to be hitting a HTTP endpoint expecting some sort of rest based response. We specify the URI parameter. The method is going to be get. We can also do anything else like put patch delete if we wanted to do that. Of course, we already talked about authentication, credential, content type. The header, we are going to specify the headers parameter, the headers variable above that. And because this is going to be using a self-signed certificate, I'm just telling it to do the skip certificate check. So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and launch PowerShell version 7. Let's just go ahead and get it run as administrator. Cool. There it is. And watch this, I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this in. It's gonna be, go really quick. Now you can see in the comment right here, I did specify the username and the password. All of this code is also gonna be available on GitHub too. So you can copy it and use it however you want. So let's just copy that and paste it in. All right, the username was root. The password was this cool little password provided to us by Cisco. Oh, need to give it a command C. There we go. And this is just giving us this little indention here because I used the back tick just to clean up the code. Press enter. Okay, we now have the response back to us stored as a PowerShell custom object. We know that when a REST API response is coming back, typically it comes back in JSON format. The invoke REST method commandlet automatically converts it from JSON into a PowerShell object. Watch, I'll just call the response variable. And you can see right there, it's taken the first layer of the JSON response and made that the 
header of this little table here. But because it's a multi-layer JSON object, it just kind of threw it in this bizarre little PowerShell object format. We can clean that up. Let me just uncomment this code back here. And you can see a few ways that we can parse this data out. First of all, I'm going to take this response, convert it back to JSON, and then write the output so that you can see it in a clean JSON response. We'll just do this. I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see this response too. How about that? Press enter. There we go. Now we've got a clean JSON response, and you can see we've got name, interface type. We can get down into the statistics and look at what all is going on there. VRF info, including IPv4 address and subnet mask. <laughs> a description that says, don't touch me. I bet you anything someone touched that because this is available to the public. All right, so that's how we can get the JSON response back. What else can we do with this data? Well, check it out. We can pull out a specific bit of data straight from that PowerShell object by just using this decimal-like format. At. We can say go into the first layer of Cisco IOS XE interfaces opera interface. Now notice this is in single quotes because these little hyphens here, because this is a string and not some sort of calculation or calculated field, uh, we do have to put this in quotes to manage these hyphens and the colons and other symbols. So I'll just paste that in, press enter. You can see it returns to me that exact name, Gigabit Ethernet 1. Where does this come into use? Well, if I need to get down and actually pull out a status, some sort of interface status or duplex status, whatever the case is, whatever statistic I'm monitoring, I can query that specific object and then write my PowerShell code to react to it. Now, one little bit further, maybe I can show you exactly how that works. We've got an if statement. We can see if the admin status does return to me the result of interface state up, then we're just going to write output to the host that says, hey, this interface is up. Now, obviously, in a automated code fashion, you wouldn't be writing out to a console. You'd be telling it to perform some sort of action or not. Whatever the case, just press enter. Look at that. Gigabit Ethernet 1 is up. So where would you use PowerShell in an automated fashion? Well, obviously any Windows-based device, but now PowerShell Core is open source. So you can run this on your Linux or Mac OS platforms too, if that's what you want. You can also deploy an Azure function app and maybe monitor your devices from within Azure. And then if you get a status back, an adverse status or something like that, you could hook it into an Azure Logic app and go from there sending emails, text messages, Whatever alerts you want, you could stream it into a Power BI dashboard. All of this stuff will work perfectly for you because PowerShell is a viable product. Now remember, is PowerShell the way forward for you? Well, the networking community has embraced Python. So you're going to be giving up a lot of SDKs or other extensibility in tools and just the community in general if you go with a language like PowerShell. But the point is, is that you can use PowerShell if you want to use it within or alongside other PowerShell scripts. All right, there you have it, folks. Network programmability with PowerShell using the invoke rest method commandlet. It is absolutely possible. Maybe not the preferred way to do it, but my point is, is that you can do it. Now, the link to that code is down in the description. You'll be able to find it on GitHub in the code samples folder. And if you found this interesting, we've got a lot more stuff like this coming over the next few days, weeks, months, and so on. So do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe in the bottom corner there, and I'll see you in the next one.